I remember when I first started school. I was one of those kids who got bullied for being too smart, never too cool. My peers threw out hurtful epithets. To them, I was teacher's pet. Inside, I became transparent. So apparent you could see straight through, right through to the books and the pages I hid in. Submerge my mind in tale of white whales. Call me Ahab, call me Ishmael, but you could call me anything once I learned I was destined to win. Where do I begin? I was pleasantly plump. Mama called it baby fat. I made abstract transactions into fat, transforming the weight on my frame into substantial mental gain, gaining the respect of my teachers. I had learned the game inside out just by sitting on the bleachers. Work hard. Listen more than you talk and doors will open. The game is just politics. Take what you know and divide it by the number of people you know to help you advance it. There's no way to make this sugar-coated or romantic. Don't forget, your peers can either hinder it or advance it. Relax. The enemy of your enemy is your friend, and you'll need more than a couple of those to see you through to the end. But for those trying to remain invisible in plain sight, the rules still apply. Apply yourself. Try to understand why that X ever needed Y and take the lyrical creativity that Common taught you and testify to your intellect. You too can gain respect. Count yourself as the more. Nevertheless, make your better its best. Me? I took words and molded them into things my teachers had never heard. They claimed it, said the words I held onto would launch me on a path so super califragilistic, not even Mary Poppins could stick with it. I intellectually slew the Goliaths that stood before me with common sense and G.O.D. The ACC and SAT were both standardized tests meant to relegate me to mediocrity. But I've been looking at this same twisted logic since I started. You have to learn probability. If Naya is a young black woman and no one else in her family has graduated from a four-year institution, what's the probability that her choices will lead to failure, underachievement, or the systematic prostitution that we call making it, AKA faking it? The answer choices were A, likely, B, highly improbable, C, none of the above, D, too little information to determine, but too often the information determines our fate before we get there, and that ain't fair. But if you want to even the odds, you have to conquer logical reasoning. A student comes from a lower class family. Mommy, the sole provider, gets laid off. How does a student now pay for education without going into debt, selling her soul, or losing the dollar in a dream that brought her this close to her goal? A, not enough information. B, impossible. C, possible with high amounts of debt. Or D, none of the above. I chose D because no unstandardized test of intellect or finance can tell me not to be a better me. Kids with my mentality are as newsworthy as that rose growing from concrete. I have my inner Machiavelli, and I can build a foundation brick by brick with knowledge. Nothing on earth can stop me from going to college. Dear Naya, congratulations on your acceptance to Vanderbilt. Congratulations on being closer to your dream. I thought I'd reach the pinnacle of success, or so it seems, but hard work is what begins after you touch the rim for the first time. After you receive the audience applause for that super hot rhyme, the only failure is failing not to work harder, not to run faster, not to learn something you just didn't know. Be better than you were to begin with. Give yourself something to show and let your inner model blare with the savvy of Jay, the lyricism of Nas, and the individuality of the cool kids, i.e., I know I can be what I want to be. If I work hard at it, I'll be where I want to be. Me? I was ahead of my years. I was the one called upon to tutor my peers to help the same ones who called me fat, black, and ugly, reminiscent of the B-I-G. And I'm notorious now for being lovely and having made it.